I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast of the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. For this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I want to invite your attention to the book of Numbers, uh, Numbers chapter six. And as you're finding Numbers chapter six, as always, let me thank Reverend Osbury for entrusting me with this preaching assignment. And truly we thank God for the marvelous music ministry that we've been blessed with this morning. Numbers chapter six. And when you found Numbers chapter six, you can let me know by saying, I've got it. Numbers chapter 6, and I want to read in your hearing verses 23, verses, I'm sorry, verses 22 through 26. Numbers chapter 6, and I will begin reading at the 22nd verse. Hear ye the word of the Lord. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, Thus you shall bless the people of Israel. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. As we study together for the time that's ours this morning, I want to tag this text, Benedictions Matter. Benedictions Matter. Most of us, if not all of us, have been guilty of this at some point in our lives. Prior to COVID-19, when we gathered together physically to worship together, there have been one time or another where we left service before the benediction. Perhaps we left service in an effort to avoid the line of cars exiting the parking lot. Perhaps we left service early because we had another obligation to tend to. Or perhaps we left service early because we wanted to get to Sweetwater Tavern, founding farmers or Della J's just a little bit early. Whatever the reason, my brothers and my sisters, all of us can admit to the fact that there have been times when we've left service before the benediction. And now, my brothers and my sisters, as many of us gather together virtually to worship, now as we no longer need our legs to walk out of service, but all we need is that good Baptist finger to log off from service, we ought to just admit to the fact that some of us, we have left service before the benediction. And please understand, beloved, this is a no judgment zone this morning. I'm not coming to judge anyone because most of us, as I've said, have left. There's been a time or two where we've left before the benediction. But for whatever reason, God has sovereignly selected this servant to remind each and every one of us that benedictions matter. And before we go to our text today in Numbers chapter 6, I want to attempt to lay some groundwork as it pertains to benedictions. First and foremost, we see that benedictions are blessings. Can the church say blessings? I love the way Derek Hunter explains it. Derek Hunter says that benedictions are gospel rich blessings, which teach us to expect what only God can give. 
my brothers and my sisters, benedictions matter because benedictions are blessings. And if you're still on the fence, if you still have doubts that benedictions and blessings matter, consider this fact if would. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, after God is after God has created Adam and Eve, the first action he takes towards Adam and Eve is blessing them. Fast forward from Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 to around Luke chapter 24. And there we see in Luke's gospel, the Bible lets us know that as Christ is leaving the vicinity of Bethany and as he's getting ready to ascend to heaven, Christ lifts his hands and he blesses his disciples. Then if you make your way to Revelation chapter 22, verse 21, the very last verse of the Bible, there you will see that the last verse of the Bible ends with a blessing. I realize that may not captivate some of you because many of you are not Bible nerds like I am, but isn't it amazing that in the first chapter of the Bible, a blessing is given. In the last chapter of the Bible, a blessing is given. And right there in the middle of Genesis and Revelation, Christ blesses his disciples. Brothers and my sisters, I'm simply trying to submit to you that benedictions matter. And once again, I promise we're going to get to Numbers chapter six. But before we get there, can I give you three principles as it pertains to benedictions? Here is the first principle that we see as it pertains to benedictions. Benedictions are not prayers, but benedictions are proclamations. That is to say, my brothers and my sisters, when we see benedictions being given in the Bible, the benedictions are not requesting something of God, but they're reminding us about God. That is why when you read the benediction in Romans chapter 15, we see that Paul does not ask that God would establish the church at Rome. No, in Romans chapter 15, Paul reminds the church that they've already been established. That is why in Philippians chapter four, when Paul gives his benediction, Paul does not pray that God would bless the church of Philippi with grace. Paul reminds the church of Philippi that God's grace has already been given to them. What I'm trying to say this morning, beloved, is that benedictions are not requests. They're not prayers, but they're proclamations that remind us that God's presence is already here. In other words, benedictions remind us that God's blessings are not on the way, but God's blessings are present right now. And that's good news, my brothers and my sisters, because it lets us know that whatever we stand in need of, it's available to us right now at this very moment. If you need God's assurance, God's assurance is available to you right now. If you need God's blessings, God's blessings are available to you right now. If you need God's comfort, God's comfort is available to you right now. If you need God's deliverance, God's deliverance is available to you right now. If you need God's, if you need God's encouragement, God's encouragement is available to you right now. If you need God's guidance, God's guidance is available to you right now. If you need God's strength, God's strength Strength is available to you right now. Benedictions, they, 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 they are not prayers, but they are proclamations. But let me suggest to us, secondly, beloved, that not only do we see that benedictions are not only, they're not prayers, but they're proclamations. But we see, secondly, that benedictions should propel us. Can the church say propel us? Think about this, beloved. Whether we gather together physically or virtually, there are some seasons in our lives when we come to church and we praise God through our pain. Accordingly, there are some seasons in our lives where the preacher will preach us 
through our pain. But think about this, beloved. Never when a service ends does, does the service end focusing on our pain. Because even though during the service we may talk about what we're dealing with and, me, and we may talk about what's in front of us when we end the service, when the benediction is given, the focus shifts from us dealing with what's in front of us and the focus shifts to the God who is above us. And the same is true in the Bible when we look at the various authors, when we look at how they write their epistles, we see that the authors that they spend their time talking about the what, but they end their time talking about the who. That is to say, beloved, when we see the authors in the Bible, when they give their benedictions, they spend their time talking about the situation, but they end their time talking about the sustainer and the savior of the universe. And here, my brothers and sisters, is why I suggest to you that benedictions ought to propel us. They ought to prepare us and even push us into the future for whatever we have to face. Because benedictions remind us, my brothers and my sisters, that's what's most important in life is not what you're working with, but who you're working with. Did you hear what I said? I said benedictions remind us that what's most important in life is not what we're working with, but who we're working with. What's most important in life is not the bills that we have to pay, but what's most important in life is the fact that we're working with Jehovah Jireh, the God who will provide. What's most important in life is not the sickness that may be in our body. What's most important is that he is Jehovah Rophi, the God who healeth thee. What's most important in our life is not the fact that we have haters on our track. What's most important in life is that we're working with Jehovah, Jehovah Nisi, the God who will fight our battles. Are there any witnesses in the building this morning who can testify what's most important in life is not what I'm working with, but who I'm working with? Do you know who I'm talking about this morning? Mary's baby, Joseph's boy, Adam's rib maker, Eve's matchmaker, Daniel's lion tamer. It's what's most important in life is not what we're working with, but who we're working with. Benedictions, number one, are proclamations, not prayers. Benedictions, number two, should propel us and prepare us for whatever we face. But here is the third principle as it pertains to benedictions. Benedictions are not restricted to certain places and certain people. Here we see in the Old Testament, in Deuteronomy chapter 21, the Bible lets us know that one of the requirements or responsibilities of the priest was to administer or to give the benediction. But here is the good news for each and every one of us. Because of a term that we use in the, in the world of theology, the priesthood of believers, which teaches us that all believers through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ have access to Christ themselves. That we can administer benedictions and speak blessings over our own lives. What I'm trying to suggest to you, my brothers and my sisters, is that because we all belong to the priesthood of believers, benedictions are not a Sunday service type of thing. Benedictions don't only have to be given on Sunday morning by the preacher. You remember in 1 Samuel when the Bible tells us that David encouraged himself I suggest to you that there are some times that we have to speak to ourselves as well. And so my brothers and my sisters, when we find ourselves, as we find ourselves in a season of life, seeking to please God in all of our ways, we ought to pray the benediction that Paul prayed in 1 Thessalonians 5, when he said, may the God of all peace continue to sanctify you 
through and through. When we find ourselves in a season of life, in a season of life where God feels stagnant and we wonder what he's up to, we ought to pray that benediction that Paul prayed in Ephesians 3 when he said, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works within us. When we find ourselves feeling down and out, feeling ourselves as feeling as though life has taken and gotten the best of us, we ought to pray that, we ought to proclaim that benediction that's found right there in Jude, where Jude says, now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and who will present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Father, be glory, majesty, and power both now and forevermore. My brothers and my sisters, we have the authority and the ability to proclaim God's word over our own lives. And now, if you still aren't convinced that benedictions matter, and if by chance you're still awake because I haven't bored you to death already, let's make our way to Numbers chapter 6, and let's study this beautiful benediction that God bestows upon his people. Notice the two movements in Numbers chapter 6. First we see, first we see, first in Genesis in Numbers chapter 6, first we see the source of the blessing. Notice in verses 23, 24, and 25, the first two words that are found. Each one of those verses begin with the two words, the Lord. Let's not skip over this significant, pa this significant part. Moses is reminding us that the source of all of our blessings come from God and God alone. Here we see in Numbers chapter 6, Aaron the priest is about to administer the blessing. But it is God who allows the blessing. In other words, Aaron is the resource of the benediction, but God is the source of the benediction. And I say that to say, my brothers and sisters, sometimes we can go through life and we can get it twisted and we get the resource and the source mixed up. Sometimes we can go through life and we can think that it is the resource that gives us our blessings, resources, our jobs, resources, various people that come into our lives. No, Numbers chapter 6 reminds us that the source of our blessings come from God and God alone. The psalmist put it this way in Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Here we see the source of the blessing. But notice number two, the substance of the blessing. Notice the four actions that God takes towards Israel and that he even takes towards us today. Here we see number one, the, the benediction in Numbers chapter six. It teaches us or reminds us that we serve a God who supplies. Can the church say supplies? Isn't it good to know, my brothers and my sisters, that as we stand here and as we experience 2021, that we serve a God who, as Paul would say in Philippians chapter 4, supplies all of our needs. Shouldn't our hearts be filled with gratitude and thanksgiving this morning, taking nothing for granted, knowing that we serve a God who supplies all of our needs in a time where businesses are closing, in a time where people have been laid off from their jobs, in a time where people are wondering where their next meal is coming from, in a time where people are wondering how they're going to make it, how many of us can testify and praise God that we serve a God who supplies our needs? The psalmist said it this way. The psalmist said, I've been young and I've been old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. 
But, but here, beloved, is the other side of the coin. How do we define God's blessings? Because I submit to you, my brothers and my sisters, if we only define God's blessings and as it relates to material gain and material wealth, we, we have put God in a box and we don't understand how awesome God is. Because there are some blessings, there are some blessings that money cannot buy. Being able to go to bed and sleep at night like a baby in spite of everything that's going on in your life. That's a blessing that only God can give. Being able to walk in a house and even though it might not be filled with luxury, it's filled with a lot of love where there's no division and contention. That's only a blessing that God can give. Being able to being able to to wipe the tears that come down from your face when you reflect on how faithful God has been down through the years. That's a blessing that only God can give to be able to wake up in the morning and to realize that you're still here in spite of everything that you've gone through. That's only a blessing that God can give to be able to look at the calendar and see when the doctor said you only had six weeks to live. But here it is two to three years later, you're still here in good strength that's a blessing that only God can give to realize that we all should be that all of us deserve to burn in hell but now we're on our way to heaven that's only a blessing that God can give Moses says benedictions matter because they remind us that we serve a God who supplies but not only do we serve a God who supplies but we serve a God who sustains. Moses, he's talking to Aaron and he tells Aaron, Aaron, tell the people, the Lord bless you and keep you. And think about this for a second, beloved. Who else could talk about the keeping power than Moses? If anybody knew what it meant for the Lord to keep someone, surely it was Moses. Go back to Exodus and there you see when Moses as a little baby was hidden, Moses could testify about the keeping power of God. Moses, if he was talking to you, he would tell you, listen, when I was sat down by the bank of the Nile River, surely that was nothing but the keeping power of God. When we were forced to make bricks without straw, that was nothing but the keeping power of God. When I had to stand before Pharaoh and declare to Pharaoh, let my people go, that was nothing but the keeping power of God. When the Egyptians were behind us and the Red Sea was in front of us, that was nothing but the keeping power of God. And I don't know about you this morning, my brothers and my sisters, surely our testimony looks a little bit different than Moses, but all of us should be able to testify and give God praise this morning for the fact that he's been keeping us in spite of the hell that we've endured, in spite of the valleys we've had to walk through, in spite of the tears we've had to cry, God has been keeping us. And as we celebrate this last Sunday of Black history month surely we as a people can testify about the keeping power of God when our ancestors were brought over here on ships and once who once were kings and queens and now made slaves in America we can testify about the keeping power of God when our ancestors were whipped and treated as though they weren't even humans we can testify about the keeping power of God when Jim Crow tried to keep us down when voting right laws tried to keep us out we can testify about the keeping power of God through many dangers toils and snares we have already come towards grace that brought us safe thus far and grace shall lead us on Moses says benedictions matter because they remind us that God sustains us but notice the last two movements of Moses's benediction Moses says, number three, benedictions matter because benedictions, they remind us about the steadfast love that God shows towards us. There we see in Numbers chapter six, verse 25, the Bible, Moses says, and may his face shine upon you. 
If you're taking notes, there are various passages in the Bible, such as in Leviticus chapter 21 and Jeremiah chapter 20, where it talks about the Lord setting his face against individuals. And any time in the Bible where we see that God sets his face against someone, uh, destruction is getting ready to come their way. But here we see in Numbers chapter six, the Bible declares that God is not setting his face upon them. He is shining his face upon them, setting his face. That means destruction is about to come. But God shining his face means that God delights in us. One commentator says it this way. When God shines his face upon us. It is though a, a parent who is holding their newborn baby, looking down on that baby and smiling at their newborn. Please don't skip over this fact, beloved. God delights in you and me. How humbling should that be for each and every one of us to know that the creator and the sustainer of the universe that he delights in us, that when our ways are pleasing to him, he looks at us and he smiles at us. Look at the love that Moses is describing. Look at the steadfast love that Moses is reminding the people of God that God has for his people. Some of us can testify. We know what it means for people to give up on us. Some of us can testify. We, we know what it means for people to say it's over. But, but Moses reminds the people, hey, we serve a God who never leaves us nor forsakes us. We serve a God who delights in us. God loves us with an everlasting love. And here we see the final movement of the text. Moses reminds us that we serve a God who allows us to experience shalom. It's right there in Numbers chapter 20 and Numbers chapter 6 verse 26. That word shalom it is another word for peace. Moses talks to Aaron and he tells Aaron to remind the Israelites that no matter what you go through, God is going to allow you to experience peace. Moses speaks to Aaron. He says, listen, I realize what's ahead of you. I realize what we're getting ready to face. But please don't be discouraged because we serve a God who is going to allow you to experience peace. And how many of us this morning? are thankful that we know something about the peace of God. How many of us can testify this morning when we think about everything we've been through, when we think of some of the trials, tests, and tribulations that we've had to endure, yet we were still able to come out on the other side with our mind intact. It wasn't because of our connections. It wasn't because of our wherewithal, but it was because God granted us his peace. And can't you hear Isaiah telling us this morning, they that keep their minds stayed on him shall be kept in perfect peace. Can't you hear Paul reminding the church of Philippians, be anxious for nothing, but through prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding shall guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Here it is, February 2021. We still find ourselves in the midst of a pandemic, but even in the midst of a pandemic, we can praise God that he's given us peace. Some of us, our hearts might be heavy. Some of us, our eyes might be filled with tears, but we can testify that God has given us peace. Some of us are anxious and nervous, not knowing what the future might hold, but we can thank God that he's given us his peace. My brothers and my sisters, benedictions matter. 